Hello, I'm Skid from Last Wing Gaming Forum. Today I'm going to be giving you a look at the multi-monitor release state for X Rebirth. It's going to be a very quick look. I'm not going to go into deep, too much detail about the gameplay. Um, but as you can probably see, I do actually have it running. Um, it didn't start at this resolution, but I managed to set it just by using the resolution options. It's right there. So the resolution option is there. Um, from what I can tell, the game is horizontal plus and it tries to center a lot of the, um, or as much as it can. So as you can see, the main rendering in the middle of the screen here is actually a rendering a little bit beyond a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but it is still centered. However, the main menu is rendering over on the top left hand side, which is not ideal. Um, I will go through the graphical options in a minute. Um, but you also have sound options, game options. Um, by default, collision avoidance, aim assist, and auto roll are on. And none of them are particularly things that I like. They're basically all um, flight assists of one description or another. And aim assist even has a with controller option, which does not bode well, and we will get to that in a minute. So let me just quick start a free play. So while this is loading, um, the performance of the game on release doesn't appear to be great, particularly with multi-monitor systems. Um, I'll get in more detail about that in a bit, um, but it could be driver related and it could be on my system SLI related. Um, from what I can tell, it is not properly syncing the SLI cores, which means it's probably not utilizing them properly. This means that I might actually be seeing a lower frames per second than I would get if I was only using a single monitor. So I don't think there's an SLI profile that's existing is working and I'm actually going in reverse. Let me just stop that. And I'm under attack for some reason. Okay, hopefully they won't destroy me. So um, yeah. Currently, this is rendering about 18 frames per second with recording, so I would probably get a little bit extra out of that, but to prove my, or to kind of illustrate my issue, or my theory that SLI isn't working properly, uh, Core 1, or GPU 1, is using 70% of its load, GPU 2 is using 80% of its load. So there's a 10% differential between the two cores, which is not ideal for something that's supposed to keep them synced. Um, I can't actually disable SLI because of the way I have my system configured. Uh, I have one monitor in one card and two monitors in the other card, uh, just because that allows me to use um, DVI on all of my monitors, which is a little bit useful. So we'll just go into the options because this is going to illustrate why um, Optimization is probably the highest issue with this game in the minute. So, as you can see, I'm using standard resolution. I have anti aliasing off, I have SSAO off, um, which is, I believe, ambulance occlusion. It does that and it takes two, two, three, so I'm down 16 frames per second. So, I have most of the settings as high as they will go. So, if I turn that off, we're at 19, we turn shadows off, 20. If we change the shader quality to low, 22 frames per second. If we change the level of detail settings all the way down to zero, 22 frames per second. If we change the view distance all the way down to zero, 23 frames per second. If we change this all the way down to zero, 23 frames per second. So that's from almost as high as it will go with anti-aliasing off to as low as it will go and I've gained about five frames per second, which is absolutely absurd. There is basically no optimization and the lack of options here means that I can't configure things in such a way that I could actually get a decent frame rate out of this constantly. So we're just gonna set this back up to high just because this for five frames per second, there's little to no reason leaving them that low. So we'll set this back up to 50. And turn shadows back on. Now it is worth noting that the game has literally only just come out, so it's a little unfair to overly criticise it for this, but still, the performance and the lack of ability to 
change the settings enough to get any performance out of it is pretty sad. It's likely that once there's an SLI profile I'll get a reasonable frame rate out of it but as it stands it's 20 frames per second at the minute and I think it averages 25-30 while playing. I've not played enough to know for sure but yeah this is basically the starting system in a, uh, the free play section and it's 20 so that's not great. Now another issue is joystick support. It does exist. I have my X52 Pro connected up and working at the moment. However, if I go through to the options and I reset my control settings, yes. So this is with my joystick connected. I'm fairly sure that the previous game correctly identified the joystick and actually set it up. But this game is basically just using a default. So if I now go back into the game, I'm not touching anything. And the reason it's doing this is fairly simple. It is a PC game that has been designed for a control or a joypad. As you can see it has right stiff, left stick and left trigger despite the fact that this is a joystick. So it thinks it has a left trigger. Now left trigger is actually the throttle. So if I go there and move the throttle up, there we go, roll is now left trigger. Uh, and the actual rolling on the joystick is considered the right trigger which isn't great and it also then thinks there's a left and a right stick which there isn't there's one so i have to rebind your so that's vertical on the stick that's horizontal on the stick and i can't bind these because basically i have no other analog inputs on this joystick and if i wanted to bind them i would want to bind them to a left a right an up and a down because i've got a few hat switches and i would bind them to that but I can't do that because the option isn't there because it's designed for pads. Um, I can't currently find a way to actually remove binding. So if I want to get rid of these bindings here from button 5 and 6, I have to bind them to something that I probably know I'm not going to use. So I'm going to bind them to my flick switches down at the bottom. Boost, I will bind to here. I'm going to ignore those because for some reason they won't bind at all, but second weapons will, so I will bind that to the main fire, I will bind that to my secondary fire button, and I'll leave the rest of them the same for now. So now that everything is rebound, there we go. But there is a slight problem. For one, the throttle is backwards, but I can fix that. The main problem, however, is that I'm now pressing left on my joystick. I'm pressing it a bit more, I'm pressing it a bit more, I'm pressing it a bit more, and I bound that wrong because that's going up. That'll be my bad. But yeah, there's about a 50% dead zone, and there's no way to change it. Let me just find that the right way around. Yeah. I've got my Yorin pitch the wrong way around. Um, now, this is incredibly annoying. I mean, I can invert these so I can fix the uh, problem with those. So, pitch and throttle will now be correct. Um, there's buttons for menus and buttons for while you're on platforms or walking around etc but sensitivity is just this you can set the sensitivity and I'm not entirely sure whether that works particularly well because I've set it to 100 and set it to 0 and detected no real difference between the two so that's not great but yeah there's a 50% dead stone on my joystick dead zone sorry which again is just bad. That's outright bad. It should never be that high. Even on a, even on a so like a joypad, I hate it that high. And there's no way to effectively check it. I mean, I've gone through to my game settings. I know it's registering this small 50% movement, small 50% movement. But yeah, the game just doesn't detect it. And then there's other issues like if I fire, and if you look at the left screen, the effect isn't actually rendering on the left hand screen. So, yeah, its state at the minute is playable, but not particularly great. It's pretty bad. Uh, let's see if I can find menu keys. There's one thing I haven't checked, so we can have a look at it now. So menus, uh, no space. I want to bring up. Interaction menu, trade menu, com info. So let's try. Let's try opening the maps, which are standard keys, and then 
Shift T and F. Shift T. Okay, so that menu's fine. Um, let's have a look at the map. Yeah, that's okay. So anything rendering on that's probably going to be fine. Yeah, that looks like it's rendering okay. Although, yeah, that's flat out not registering my mouse. There it is. It's better. Thank you. Quit disappearing. What are you doing? Let me have my mouse. I know I've got a joystick attached. I don't care. I want to use the mouse. Okay, yeah, so that's broken as well. Apparently I can't use the mouse with my joystick installed. It keeps disappearing. So yeah, release state is not great. It's probably playable, but 17 frames per second at the minute is just atrocious. I mean, this thing, my rig, can play Battlefield at 60 frames per second. And Battlefield has more to render than this does. It has flat out more to render. So yeah, they really need to work on the optimization. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video quickly before I've actually played it, just so that, well, partly because the sooner you get your video out, the more views you get, which is always useful for a channel. But yeah, it's worth noting the performance of this is so bad that if you're not running, so like at least one um, 680, it's possibly going to be unplayable for you. There's also no field of view slider, although I'm not entirely sure whether the field of view is actually bad at the minute. It doesn't look too bad. But yeah. So yeah, now that you know, uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.